So in this session, we're going to look at how to get your colors captured correctly. It's obviously really important when you're videoing or when you're taking stills, photographs, capturing any sort of image, you need to get those images correct color-wise. Now, it may be that, um, you know, perhaps in, in all instances, it's not, not so important for you, but if you are doing product capture or product photography, product videography, um, maybe things like weddings as well, where you've got to get those colors correct. You know, the bride's dress has to be the right color. And when you've got mixed lighting conditions, you've got situations where perhaps during the day, the, your models or your subjects go into different lighting conditions, you really need to be able to get that linearity. You need to get it correct, the same across all those different lighting conditions. Classically in weddings, for instance, if you are maybe taking some shots in a church and likewise outside for group shots and maybe for things like um, taking reception as well. Then different lighting conditions, it could be sodium in one, could be entirely different, obviously daylight outside. We need to get those levels, that linearity correct. And that's why we've got something like a color card basically. So it comes in different varieties. This is the, um, the spider checker. Um, great card actually. So big, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a decent size. The idea there is it can fold flat, quite robust and so on, so that's good. You need something you can carry around and uh, you know, not be worried about what's going to happen to it. But when it folds out, it can be tripod mounted or lighting rig mounted. Pop it in there, basically. You don't need to have somebody else holding it, although you could do if you have somebody to hold it. But it gives you something you can aim for. And similar to uh, grey cards, uh, where you've got the, the capability of capturing grey levels and getting those correct. What we're doing here is we're capturing 48 different colours and values. So therefore that gives you a great opportunity to have all of those colours referred and a, and a calibration basically created from that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into, uh, into some, uh, some shoots that we've already done and we're going to look how that's being applied basically. So key thing, basically shoot this in every lighting condition you're in. Whether that's stills or video, capture it at the front end or maybe at the end. doesn't actually matter when at, during the, the session, but basically just capture it at some point. A few frames, basically, if you're doing that uh, within a video environment. In fact, this face here is entirely aimed up for uh, working with software like Blackmagic Resolve, for instance. So make sure you get it captured in there, either stills or video. And then we're going to have a look at it in this instance in the stills environment. So. We're going to go into Lightroom. So here we've got a picture of the, um, the calibration chart within Lightroom. So we're taking it in stills scenario here. So what we've done is we've captured it, actually cropped it down now. One of the key things about the, the color chart here is it needs to be big enough that you can actually shoot and crop down. And you need to, to shoot uh, your images in a similar sort of amount of room to what your end images will be, i.e. if you're doing a group scene that's about 30 people across, you need to shoot your color chart in that same environment. So you're actually metering for the same lighting conditions, not just zooming in on the actual chart itself and only metering for the chart. So therefore, what we've done here is we've, we've actually done that, we've shot it, we've, we've, we've cropped it down now. And so there we, now we're going to go into a simple three-stage process. First of all, we know that this square here is a 96% white and this square here is a 4% black. And we also know that we've got a a white balance tool. So what we're going to do first of all is start off by removing any overall color cast just by clicking on that gray square there and taking out any overall color cast. And then we're going to look at the readings. Now if you look at the histogram on the right hand side at the top you can see that is now spot on 96%. So we know the exposure is correct. If it wasn't correct we'd actually use the exposure slider over on the right hand side to adjust the exposure to get that reading correct. Down the bottom here, we've got a 4% black, so maybe a little bit low on that, so we can adjust that with the blacks, basically, so we'll just uh, drop that down a little bit, so we've, we've actually got that somewhere nearer to, to 4%. I mean, we're taking an average reading of that RGB value just under the histogram there. So having got our exposure and our contrast levels correct, we're just going to pop over here into our edit menu and go down to the Edit in Spider Checker app. Now this is an app that comes with the Spider Checker in this case, and it's a plugin that sits on Mac and PC, so no problems there. And we're just going to pop open our image here in the, the relevant app, and that's going to allow us to, rather than our having to go through every color here and uh, read our, uh, our readings on the, the screen, 
uh, using a, a color picker and adjust accordingly. What we're going to do here is we have the 48 points of color. I'm just moving them in front of the actual cropped shot in the background there. Just drop those points so we've got the sample points just over the right squares. Essentially, we're just making sure that we've actually got this square in frame. We're coming out of Lightroom, so we're going to save back into Lightroom here, but we can go back into Camera Raw or Hasselblad Focus. And we're going to give that a save calibration, give it a name. So we're going to call that our um, Monday morning outside calibration. Click OK. And that's it. We've now done that. Um, it's created a, a preset which actually appears as a calibration preset over in our, our uh, develop menu here under, under presets. It should appear under user presets. Now the more eagle eye of you will notice it's not actually there. One of the nuances of Lightroom, you just need to quit and restart in order to apply those presets and have the, the cache refreshed in order for them to appear. But basically we've got some that we've prepared already because we've got in this this scenario, this, this wedding, we had some uh, uh, some outside shots, some inside shots, and some uh, in the church shots, which all had a different color cast. You can see there we're getting a very big uh, change in color casts and changing colors. And of course, the the groom, the bride, etc., etc., haven't nipped out and um, and got suntan somewhere in the middle of the day or changed clothes. They've just been shot in different lighting conditions. So we want to get those colors correct. So we've got the, the three different color casts here set up. So this is inside the reception, so let's just click on the inside reception one. That's going to remove the inside uh, the, the color cast from the inside lighting and get those colors correct. Let's pop outside. We can choose multiple shots if we wanted to and apply it to multiple shots, but let's go for that outside church calibration to correct those colors again. And then lastly, the, the shots that were actually shot first in the church. Let's apply those calibrations in there, basically, so we can instantly do that correction within the church. So there we are, we've now gone from that mixed set of lighting conditions to now everything looking the same across the lighting uh, gamut, colors being accurate. So whether you're trying to linearize across different lighting conditions or just get those colors correct, you've now been able to do that using the, the color chart in this case, the spider checker and the software that comes with it. So there we are, getting you into that correct, accurate color calibration and color capture. Get yourself a, a color chart and you've got a great way of making sure that you capture your colors correctly. Just make sure you shoot it in every lighting condition you're in, and then you can use those settings and apply it to every shot or every take in that lighting condition.